Uh, what? Final Cut Pro on the iPad, the pipe dream that all of us had, okay, maybe not all of us, to get Final Cut Pro even more portable has finally come true. And Apple drops this update on a Tuesday, of course, out of nowhere, two months after the March event that wasn't, and a month away from WWDC, where a lot of us who love Final Cut Pro have been saying, if Apple doesn't come up with something big with Final Cut Pro, I'm switching. And after the shock and adrenaline and thrill wears off from this huge news for Final Cut Pro, will some of us have restored faith in Apple, or will we scratch our heads muttering to ourselves as we pace for an uncomfortably long time in front of the lettuce section of the produce department or local grocery store, a small crowd gathering around wondering, is that man okay? For some of you, you're not okay. And it's not just because Final Cut Pro has gone subscription, it's because you're feeling left out, muttering by the lettuce, of course, saying, but I'm never going to edit in Final Cut Pro on my iPad. When do I get an update? That's for me. The whole thing's quite polarizing, really, and in trying to read the room, I see many who are ecstatic, while others' resolve to switch to resolve has been cemented. They're out and they ain't coming back. Now, before we get into all that, let's take a closer look at what all lies within this brand new app for iPad and how it relates to future updates of the desktop version of our beloved Final Cut Pro. Is the desktop version going to go subscription? Will we get even more machine learning features? Is the user interface going to look just like the new iPad app? But first, let's go into some system requirements. You can install Final Cut Pro for iPad on your 12.9 inch iPad Pro 5th or 6th generation, 11 inch iPad Pro 3rd or 4th generation, or iPad Air 5th generation with iPad OS 16.4 or later. So if you don't have one of those iPads, you gotta go shopping, which of course is exactly what Apple wants. They're a business and Final Cut Pro on the iPad is certainly a product that they want you, us, to invest in. I only have an iPad mini, so if I want in on this Final Cut Pro for iPad Love Fest, I gotta hit up the Apple Store here in Omaha and snag an iPad Pro. And when is Final Cut Pro for iPad available? You can subscribe to Final Cut Pro for iPad in the App Store starting May 23rd, and the app will be fully compatible with the desktop version as soon as Final Cut Pro 10.6.6 is released. So that's exciting. We know for sure we're getting an update to Final Cut Pro for this release. But let's get into the nitty gritty here of what we're gonna get with Final Cut Pro on the iPad. So there are a ton of differences between the user interface for Final Cut Pro on the iPad versus the desktop version. The biggest one is that the browser is to the right of the viewer window and normally it's to the left. When editing a multicam, you can see all of your angles below your timeline and simply tap on them to blade your clips and switch angles. Titles are also included in what looks like a new unified browser, whereas in the desktop version, your titles are accessible in the sidebar and then visible in the browser after navigating to them. Of course, there are numerous changes to the details of the new user user interface, new buttons at the top of the Final Cut Pro window, and new editing controls along the bottom. Everything looks the same in a sense, yet kind of completely different. If you look closely at the timeline, you can see that clips have icons in the upper left corner that tell you what type of media it is, a title, a video, voiceover, or a sound effect. Clips are now two-toned with a darker shade at the bottom and a lighter shade on the top half. This will be especially helpful with audio waveforms, having more contrast so they're much easier to see. The clips in the primary storyline show a visible gap between them, which makes my brain think there are gaps in your edit, black frames, but my guess is it helps to quickly see your individual clips to make for easier grabbing with your finger or Apple Pencil. The playhead looks quite a bit different. They've made the top of it much larger to allow for ease of dragging. I also noticed in this clip that you can use the Apple Pencil to move the skimmer. So the skimmer is still going to be in Final Cut Pro for the iPad. They've renamed generators to backgrounds, which I think is good and makes more sense. They've also merged the effects browser with the browser, it seems, simplifying where titles, effects, transitions, and media are now accessible, which is a throwback to Final Cut Pro pre-10.3. They used to have all of this stuff in one place from what I remember, and maybe now they've gone back to that more simplified concept. There are also new categories in the browser, objects, and soundtracks. And this is something I've heard requested about Final Cut Pro. Things feel a little scattered between effects, transitions, media, sound library, titles, and all that. Why not simplify and condense them all into one place? I think that we'll see this carried over in the next big update to Final Cut Pro. Maybe not 10.6.6, but perhaps 10.7 or 11.0. So I really love this simplification of the user interface with the iPad app. 
So Final Cut Pro for iPad will have a host of touch controls. In this video demo, we see someone using their finger to move the playhead and drag and drop media from the browser into their project. Apple says, and I quote, Apple Pencil Hover unlocks the ability for users to quickly skim and preview footage without ever touching the screen. But the big addition to Final Cut Pro's touch interface is making the old new again by adding a jog wheel. The jog wheel appears on the right side of the screen and you can swipe up or down to move your timeline back and forth to navigate to the portion of your edit you need to work on. This looks like it's accessible on the entire right side of the iPad, not just on the middle part of the right side, and this is going to be a really cool feature to use. And with live drawing, you can use your Apple Pencil to draw right on your video clips. You'll also see multi-touch gestures working in Final Cut Pro, pinch to zoom, and perhaps swipe to scroll and more. In iJustine's video, she pinches to zoom in and out of the timeline in Final Cut Pro, and that looked really, really intuitive. Now, what I'm noticing in the browser in iJustine's video here is that this looks a lot like the Photos app. You have square thumbnails with the timestamp down in the lower right corner, but you can see there's a clip view down below that's highlighted in yellow, and there's handles on the left and right. You select your clip in the browser, and then you select the range down below those clips to get the exact amount of that clip that you want down into your edit. So quite a bit different than the clip viewer in the browser in Final Cut Pro for desktop. And of course, uh, there may not be a list view uh, as well. So we'll see if those if those things poured over from the desktop app or if this is going to look a little bit more like iMovie meets the Photos app. Now something else that's distinctly different in the browser in Final Cut Pro for iPad is how the waveforms look. Again, they look like the Photos app, but because it's not a photo or video, it's going to show the duration, but it's just going to show this blue waveform with a black background. I like this because you can really see what your waveform looks like very quickly. It's very easy to process it visually, and I think that's going to be really helpful. I can't wait to get my hands on the app to see what other touch interfaces there are between multi-touch, new features like the jog wheel, and everything you can do with Apple Pencil. So I think Apple gave us a sneak peek at what we can expect with the camera app for iOS 17 and the iPhone 15. Not only can you tap into the iPad's cameras to record directly into Final Cut Pro, you can now control the white balance, aperture, and focus. These are features we've been dying to have on our Pro iPhones. How can you call an iPhone Pro but you can't adjust these settings in your camera without a third-party app? So now we can expect to finally have these camera controls in the next version of iOS, something that's long overdue, but I'm glad to finally have it. And we also have some really cool monitoring tools, including audio levels from external microphones, there's overexposure indicators, and grid lines. Huge updates to what the camera software can do on the iPad with Final Cut Pro. So Apple has created a catchy phrase for a whole new family of features in Final Cut Pro that harness the power of Apple Silicon and machine learning to take tedious tasks and simplify them. We already have one of these features, it's voice isolation, and let me tell you, it is great. And now we'll be able to key out backgrounds with ease using the brand new scene removal mask. This feature allows you to remove or replace the background behind the subject in a clip, and you don't have to set up a pain in the ass green screen anymore. They've also added auto crop, which adjusts your footage for vertical, square, and other aspect ratios. So three new features under this new category called Fast Cut, with, I assume, many more to come. And I hope some of them are auto captions and auto transcriptions. That would be really nice. And then perhaps with that, Apple can retake the lead in the machine learning features available across all the different video editing apps. So I'm really excited about this new category of machine learning features that they're calling Fast Cut. I've been talking about features like this for a few years now and dying to see what Apple can do once they unleash the power of machine learning on video editing and content creation. Bring these features on fast and furious Apple, we are all ready for them. So this new feature I'm fairly certain isn't going to be quite as amazing as we initially thought. Read this carefully with me. Professional soundtracks that automatically adjust to the length of a video. We took a look earlier at the new browser and a new section called Soundtracks. I think Apple is charging a subscription to Final Cut Pro for iPad users, in part maybe to pay artists to contribute soundtracks to Final Cut. That's right. 
part of your subscription may cover having access to a growing library of music that you can use to score your videos. This music will be analyzed and processed by Apple so that it can be automatically adjusted to fit the length of your video. They're not quite ready to do this with just any old music you add to your library, and this is a key difference between Final Cut Pro's feature and Adobe Premiere Pro's, where it automatically adjusts music to fit the length of your video. So a cool idea, but not the full execution that I think a, a lot of us were hoping for. Now, again, this is just my prediction, but I've got a strong feeling that maybe Apple doesn't want to get involved with some of the legal issues there might be when it comes to using AI to alter an artist's copyrighted work, even if the editor has a license that allows them to make alterations. And maybe Apple just wants to continue to drive home the value proposition for paying a subscription for Final Cut Pro. It's not just for the app, it's for some really cool features as well, including a stock content library of soundtracks that editors can use. Apple looks to have completely overhauled multicams in this iPad app. They still work the same as the desktop version with syncing them automatically using audio, but they've updated the user interface of the angle editor and how you can use touch to cut between your angles while you edit. What's really impressive is that multicam editing is in the iPad app. Multicam editing is such a special feature in Final Cut Pro specifically, and one of the features that really sets it apart from the other video editing apps. The way that Apple handles multicam editing is so special and so unique compared to the other NLEs. It's something that has been really important to my workflow and I can't imagine working without it. So I'm excited to dive into the features present in multicam editing, especially taking a look at that new angle editor. I love the addition of the thumbnail that lets you easily see which angles you have in the angle editor. Quick access to your media in the browser to the right makes building and tweaking your multicam so simple, it seems, especially for something as complex as multicams. Again, Apple comes up with something simple, intuitive, intuitive and elegant for a complex workflow. Are you ready to spend even more money? That's right, keyboard shortcuts will work in Final Cut Pro for the iPad, so get ready to spend some money on the Magic Keyboard that gives you three accessories in one, an iPad cover, a keyboard, and a trackpad. Now, we haven't seen anything about how the trackpad will work with Final Cut Pro, but we at least know the keyboard shortcuts are going to carry over. But if you're going to use a keyboard and a trackpad, why not just use a notebook? For me, if I'm going to embrace editing on an iPad, I'm going all in with the pencil and the multi-touch gestures directly on the iPad screen. But what's the downside of that? Well, maybe I'm a little slower, and if I use touch gestures without the pencil, I'm gonna smudge up the screen quite a bit. And who wants to edit video with finger oil smeared all over their screen? So I'll be curious how users predominantly use the iPad with Final Cut Pro to edit their content. It's tough to know which way users are gonna go. There's always a trade-off, it seems, when picking one workflow over the other. But that being said, I might still get a Magic Keyboard just so I can make content about how to use it best with Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Your favorite plugins might be usable in Final Cut Pro on the iPad. These are coming soon, according to Apple's website, and I'm sure they're going to take a minute to roll out since a lot of these companies probably didn't get a lot of notice and will need to catch up to have effects, transitions, and titles ready to go soon. With Apple's love for creating a foundation for third parties to create add-ons to their apps and hardware, you can bet we'll see some amazing third-party tools soon. The website mentions Motion VFX, my favorite plugin maker, so be ready for updates to their offerings soon. All right, so a few things in the fine print. Final Cut Pro projects on the iPad can be transferred to Final Cut Pro on your Mac, but they cannot be transferred from your Mac back to the iPad. Also, external hard drives through the USB-C port on the iPad will not be supported. You can't play back footage that's stored on an external hard drive in Final Cut Pro on the iPad. I haven't been able to find any additional details about how reference mode is going to work with Final Cut Pro on the iPad, although Apple's press release does say specifically that the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with liquid retina XDR display can be used to apply color grades using reference mode. So we're still waiting on more details on that. All right, so there's a lot to digest here, and there's going to be plenty more that we learn about this brand new app for iPad, and there's a lot that we aren't seeing on the website that's going to reveal itself over the coming weeks. So I highly recommend subscribing to my channel if you're not subscribed, so we can discover all of that together between my main channel videos and my live streams. Now, I know a lot of you are out when it comes to a subscription. Personally, I'm not. I'm still all in. I earn a living from using Final Cut Pro, so $50 a year is an investment to me, not an expense. This is a small price to pay 
pay to get some serious return on investment on not only my channel content, but my client work as well. At first, I was feeling a little left out. I don't really intend to do any serious editing on the iPad personally, but I do want to learn it so I can teach it and be able to use it from time to time. I do imagine there are a lot of high-level pros who are really disappointed that this release is yet another update that doesn't have a huge impact on them right now. But then I started to see how this version of Final Cut Pro is going to impact the desktop version of Final Cut Pro, and it gets me really excited about what the future holds for Final Cut Pro. We already know that there will be Final Cut Pro 10.6.6 that allows for compatibility with Final Cut on the iPad, but what about beyond that? What might we see at WWDC if the M-powered Mac Pro is released? What might we see in the fall when new versions of Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS are released alongside new iPads, phones, and Macs? Apple still needs to sell new hardware, and if Final Cut Pro 10.7 or 11.0 is just as exciting as Final Cut Pro for the iPad, you better believe there are going to be a lot of Intel holdouts who've been editing with older versions of Final Cut Pro, and they want in on the new 10.7 or 11.0 features and upgrades, and they're going to get new machines. I think we're going to see a completely new version of Final Cut Pro that looks very similar to the iPad app, and I think we're going to see even more fast cut features that require Apple Silicon and the latest versions of Mac OS to take advantage of all that. Apple knows they have to put forth a really powerful value proposition to get a bunch of hardware upgrade holdouts to finally buy the hardware that's going to allow them to get the new Final Cut Pro, even if it is a subscription. I mean, I'm going to buy an iPad Pro when normally I would never have one. So I think there's a lot of upside with a subscription. From what I understand, many apps that are subscription-based do see an increased frequency in updates and attention from the companies that make them. And I think the same will hold true for Final Cut Pro, since it's now such an integral part of the Apple hardware ecosystem. And when people are paying a subscription, they have higher expectations. And I think there's pressure on the software makers to deliver on those expectations more frequently because their revenue depends on it. And now they can measure more accurately who's staying and who's leaving based on updates. Are more people coming because an update brought more subscribers? Or are people shedding their subscription because the features aren't updating soon enough? Think about Netflix, everything that they've done and spent on their content to increase subscriptions. I think it's a win for consumers, even though it seems at first like your wallet is taking a hit in order to have access to an app that you used to get for a one-time fee. Final Cut Pro for the iPad, this is tied to the iPhone with ProRes recording and the updates we'll see to the camera app. It's permanent tied to the iPad and of course it's integral to the Mac. I think this release of Final Cut Pro for the iPad is Apple's declaration and commitment to the majority of professional users even if the most professional users who are editing feature films at the highest level aren't getting updates that matter most to them. Apple's focused on their broadest customer base, and if you look at their marketing video for Final Cut on the iPad, you can see who their target customer is. We may not all love it or even like it, but Apple has just declared its commitment to Final Cut Pro, and I personally can't wait to see what updates they have in store now that the heavy lifting of converting to Apple Silicon for the last few years and building Final Cut Pro for the iPad iPad is done. I've been asking a lot of you if you think the future of Final Cut Pro is bright or bleak, and this says to me unequivocally that the future is indeed bright.